with Bishop Naz Rali, who the former Bishop of Rochester, and we're finishing up at Forward in Faith here in St. Louis, uh, Lady of the Snows. And we just got news uh, yesterday from England that they they voted to allow uh, same-sex marriages in the near future. Um, this was uh, clearly approved by the Queen. It's made it through the House of Lords and law. The Church of England has dealt specifically in the last two years with how do we protect priests and bishops who don't um, agree with the growing tide in the Church of England, uh, specifically women bishops, and now we have uh, the, the thunderous uh, coming of same-sex marriages. What are the future protections being, that are going to be set up for bishops and clergy who can't go this step? I think this is the big question. At the moment, uh, there is considerable reluctance on the part of the official church, if you like, uh, to provide adequate protections um, on either count. Uh, there may be some kind of voluntary opt-in arrangement uh, for people who in conscience cannot accept women bishops. How long that will last and who will honor it are open questions. Uh, it is not uh, too dissimilar to what happened in the Episcopal Church. And we know that didn't last very long, that kind of provision. Um, so it is, what is being offered is unsatisfactory. Of course, what people have been pressing for is um, satisfactory provision so that people can be certain of their faith and of the order of those who minister to them for the foreseeable future. Uh, that is not on offer. If it were on offer, that arrangement could also be used, of course, to harness and to gather uh, people of orthodox, Catholic, biblical views uh, together. Uh, at the moment, the danger is of fragmentation, uh, of divide and rule, uh, and for those divided communities uh, eventually uh, to capitulate, to begin to disappear, uh, to leave. I mean, all of those things are possible. England is unique because it's a state church. The Church of England is, and, the, and the state are not one, but they work within each other. Um, it's hard to describe to Americans how it works. In as such, one, for all intents and purposes, has become an apostate. Can one work within that in the Church of England being connected to an apostate state? Yes, the Church of England is not a state church in the sense that some European churches have been. Uh, it is an established church, which means it has a role in the state, uh, in the apparatus of the state, in the councils of the state. Uh, but in my view, um, and that, I think, has been the traditional Anglican position. They should be without compromising the gospel. Uh, but as you say, uh, I think it is quite possible that um, what the state has done will affect the church, and the church may use what the state has done as an excuse uh, to do things itself. I mean, I think that is really a danger. I don't think it is true, as has been said, that um, the church has to give in because it is an established church, and if it doesn't, it'll be disestablished, and so forth. Um, the injunctions of Elizabeth I and the admonitions attached to them clearly separated the ministry of God's word and of his sacraments uh, from any role that the monarch had or has in the church. Uh, the history in the 20th century was a progressive freeing the church uh, on questions of doctrine and worship and order uh, from the demands of the state. I think it would be a very regressive move uh, if the state were to interfere, for example, on the question of women bishops. Mm -hmm. There's not been a lot of hope in the Anglican communion in the last dozen years for 
people inside the Anglican Communion watching what's going on and people outside saying, can we work with these people? Recently, uh, a couple of years ago, we had a GAFCON meeting. It, it's become a GAFCON movement. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the inactivity of the instruments of unity uh, in the Anglican Communion, is this something GAFCON can not replace but replicate um, to be maybe an Anglican Congress? Is there something that GAFCON is going to move into that will take an authoritative role in the Anglican Communion? Yeah, GAFCON is a movement, and it is a movement for the renewal of the church. Uh, renewal, uh, biblical uh, renewal, uh, renewal in the Word of God, uh, in the sacraments, uh, on questions of order in the church. It is a movement, but it is not just any kind of movement. It is a movement that has an ecclesial, a church dimension to it. Uh, for instance, the GAFCON primates recognized ACNA as a church and its bishops uh, and its archbishop uh, in a way that other movements, of course, could not have done. Now, I think that um, GAFCON will be called on in this role more and more to behave ecclesially uh, whilst uh, not necessarily turning into an institution at the same time being able to gather orthodox, Catholic, evangelical-minded Anglicans in the cause of the one faith. So you expect GAFCON to attract more primates and more bishops that have not attended before? Is it something that's going to grow, or it's going to uh, keep its base and grow with its base? I hope it grows. Um, the first GAFCON was extremely well attended by Anglo-Catholics, Charismatics, Evangelicals. I hope that is also the case this time in October. We must encourage Catholics in particular uh, to attend and to make their voice heard. We need that voice. Um, uh, in any case, uh, whether it is GAFCON or any other kind of gathering, uh, in the end, it is good for people to gather, there is no harm in that, but in the end, what we need is a common platform for all uh, Orthodox Anglicans to be able to gather and to live together, because what unites them is more important than what divides them. So the Anglican Communion right now is not speaking. The primates don't meet. Canterbury has lost its voice. Uh, the ACC is fraught with its own destruction. Um, Lambeth uh, it will pretty much be unattended the next time uh, by a majority of the primates. GAFCON would be the future then. Well, what the way to look at it is this. Rather than bemoan what is not working, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a temptation for us, uh, to take this as an opportunity. Here is an opportunity for GAFCON, for Orthodox Anglicans, and for their voice to be heard clearly, because there's nothing else on the air, as it were. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for your time. Thank You're you. off to Quincy now. You had a wonderful time. Yes, uh, yes. Let's talk a little about the heat. Yes. It's been hot in England, it's been hot here. Um, obviously, in all your travels, uh, this is you know, pretty unique this time around. That's fine. I mean, I think um, I can take the heat, and uh, <laughs> what I was fearing was wind and rain. Yes. Um, and we haven't got that, so we praise God. 